Hey everybody, today's CCC Maker Project is going to be embroidered uh, masks. Uh, you can do these with any kind of like tightly woven cotton. Uh, so like t-shirt fabric will work, but quilting fabric and broadcloth and stuff like that is better if you happen to have it. Uh, you don't need any fancy materials, you could do this with like a hotel uh, sewing kit. But I am choosing to use embroidery floss, which is a thicker type of thread that's generally used uh, for that type of fabric art. And I'm gonna use this big needle here, mostly so that you guys can see it. But if you can see how big that eye is, it's gonna make it really easy for me to pass the embroidery floss through. Uh, you also need two pieces of yarn, or you could use rubber bands, a pin cushion uh, full of pins, mine's a little strawberry here, a pencil, and a pair of scissors. Uh, now to get started, we want to make the actual mask first. So with these two pieces of fabric, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take them and this paler side here uh, is the wrong side of the fabric. What that means uh, is that this is the side that we want facing out and in a lot of machine tooled fabrics, this side is generally rougher as well. Uh, cotton, not so much, but things like satin. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and on the top and the bottom, we're gonna fold it up about half an inch. It does not have to be perfect. We just want it to match on either side. If you happen to have like a measuring uh, mat here, uh, like I do, you can go ahead and use that. You could use a ruler or you can eyeball it. So once we've got that about where we want it, we're gonna fold that down, uh, hold it down, and we're gonna take some of our pins and we're just gonna start pinning that. I like to pin from the middle because I find that the fabric folds over more uh, if you start pinning on the edge and then you get an uneven edge. But I just like to combat that right off the bat. Um, and then you definitely wanna get the corners and if you, if you have uh, pins to spare, you can get the spaces in between the corners and center. So we're just gonna push the pin through the fabric right here and then we're gonna push it up. Uh, you kinda turn your wrist to do that. All right, so I have pinned the edges of my pieces and as you can see, they line up pretty well. The next step is gonna to be to add the strap to the edge of the mask. And the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna take uh, your yarn and we're gonna find the center of it by pinching the ends together. And then we're gonna take the center of that yarn and put it on the center of the edge here. Um, then we're gonna fold this over a little bit more than we folded over these. Um, so that's gonna be, these were about half an inch and this is gonna be about 75% of an inch. Just pull that yarn to the very edge of that. Uh, and once we get it there, we're gonna take the pin out of the corner and then we're gonna pin it through both of the uh, folds. So that stays down and where we want it. And we're gonna do that on this side as well. Now, we're only gonna do this on one piece of the, one of the other pieces of fabric. The other piece is just gonna be folded over that 75 percent of an inch without this string because you only need uh, two pieces of string for the straps. Okay, so I have everything pinned where I need it to be. Uh, the next step is actually going to be to take these, put them with the right side facing out on either side, and then we're going to start pinning them together uh, by lining up the edges as best as we possibly can, taking one of the pins out, uh, and then pinning it through both pieces again, and we'll remove the extra pin that we don't need. It might be a little bit harder to poke it through. And that way we'll be left with what will look like a one uh, big piece. So we're gonna do that all the way around. Okay, so now that I have this pinned on all of the sides, the last step that we're gonna need to do to actually make the mask itself uh, is to sew with a stitch of our choice all the way along the edge here. Uh, when you're sewing along these two edges where you put the string, you just wanna be careful to make sure that there's enough room in between the uh, seam and the edge that the string can still move around because you wanna be able to pull that. Um, if you have a machine, that's what I would recommend you use, but if you don't have one, uh, you could also do any hand stitch uh, as long as it's not a running stitch, which is that stitch that looks like a dashed line that you do by going out and into the fabric. 
Um, if you're going to do something like that, a simple stitch, uh, I recommend doing a back stitch because it's basically the same thing, but it has the extra added step go of going back and closing that area uh, in between the two stitches just to make it a much tighter stitch so that it will be more effective as a mask. So I'm going to go ahead and sew this and I will be right back to show you guys how to embroider it. I have sewn together my mask and I drew the design that I wanted, which is a smiley face, uh, on here with a pencil. You could also use chalk, but a uh, pencil is uh, usually more readily available. So thread your needle and take the end and tie it in a knot because we don't want that coming out when we pull the thread through the back. So just tie that and that'll sort of stop the thread from coming through and I like to double tie it which is kind of expert difficulty mode in gloves. Uh, if you are giving these to somebody, by the way, uh, you should wear a mask and gloves while you're making them. If you don't happen to have a mask, uh, because you haven't sewn one yet, or for anything like that, uh, tie some fabric around your mouth because we just want to make sure uh, that we, if we're giving these to other people, don't have them put something on their face that we have touched or uh, breathed on. So now that we've got our needle tied with our knot in the end, uh, we're going to take this and we are going to uh, poke our needle through uh, at the start of our pattern. And we are just going to pull that until the knot uh, hits the back and it doesn't come through anymore. So we are going to push our needle again through the same place that we uh, pulled it up. We are going to make that loop and we're not going to pull it all the way closed. Uh, so we're gonna take one stitch length, which can be however long you want it to be, um, and push that needle through along wherever uh, it is that you drew, pull it back up, and uh, tighten it. Uh, this is called a chain stitch, by the way. It's one of the more basic embroidery stitches. There are hundreds of them out there if you want to look up examples of different ones that you could do. Um, if you can see, it forms little uh, circular chain links like this one here. Uh, so we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to poke the needle through where we came up in the first place to make that loop. We're going to pull it. And then again, one stitch length away into our pattern, we are going to poke it the needle up. That's about right. It doesn't have to be perfect, and honestly, if this is your first time embroidering, or even your hundredth time embroidering, it probably won't be perfect. But it will be pretty fun. So we're going to just pull that until it is lightly tightened. We don't want to tighten a chain stitch all the way because it will pucker the fabric, uh, and then it loses that lovely little round shape that it gets that gives it so much definition. And we're just going to keep doing this all the way along our design. When you do get to the end of a line of stitches and you want to um, pick up and start from somewhere else, or if you run out of thread, uh, what you're going to want to do is instead of doing the typical chain stitch, um, poke that through underneath that last chain, uh, pull it all the way, uh, slip this underneath the last stitch, and tie a little knot, like a shoelace knot. Uh, if you want, you can tie it again. I prefer to just for security. One knot should be enough, but just in case. And that way you can pick it up and cut this off without any of the thread coming out. And we have our mask. You can use the strings to tie this behind your head. Uh, if you do make one of these and you want to post it, uh, to social media, please tag us at FLC Makerspace and at Moore Park College Makerspace uh, because those are the wonderful people that we're working with to bring you these videos and hashtag it with hashtag CCC Maker. All right, guys, we will see you next week. Stay healthy.